Hello everybody, Mr. Atrophy here. This is the second part of the Believers and Skeptics. The, the first part I was talking more about the Believers side. People that will latch on to an idea without any investigation or thought. This one is uh, more talking about something that I'm guilty of skepticism. A little bit's good. A lot of it's good. Uh, you should be skeptical. You should question things. And I've said this before. Was saying, I don't know. On something, I think it's the, the second most amazing thing that you can say. Because saying, I don't know, doesn't mean you're wrong. It means you don't know. Instead of making up some fairy tale explaining that. When you say, I don't know, that allows you to investigate. It allows you to study, learn, test, retest, and then eventually say something pretty cool. I do know. But you can be so skeptical that you eternally question, almost like the two-year-old, why, 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 why. At, at some point, though, you have to stop, stop asking why. Uh, an example, uh, gravity. We know what it does. We have the mathematical equations describing what it does. We have models explaining how it works in different environments. The famous experiment on the moon where they dropped, uh, was it a feather and a, a small weight or a rock? Proving a uh, about acceleration, stuff like that. You, you, can, you can quantify it, its effects, but you can't explain why. Like this pencil, the, and a friend, friend used this um, explanation to me once uh, on how weak gravity is. And initially you think, well, it's not really weak because it, everything we do is dominated by gravity but when you think about it the entire earth is pulling down on this pencil but I can hold it up with one hand and the, the if, if, if you know a little bit about physics what what stops the pencil from going through the atoms in my finger is the magnetism the outside of the atoms are electrons which are negatively charged and they repel each other so the magnetism is also a hell of a lot stronger than gravity but between the pencil and the earth we don't know what it is that's actually pulling it down but scientists will tell you that it's accepted that it does it. But if you constantly, if you question that to the point where you would stop believing in gravity because you can't explain why, you would be pretty asinine. So there, there is a, a damaging aspect to skepticism too. You, you have to be able to, at some point, believe what you see, even if there isn't enough of a explanation. And the... So, what a, a healthy mind should have is a middle way. 
And uh, that, that term that I use, some people will know it's Buddhist. Um, I've studied Buddhism quite thoroughly, uh, Tibetan, Thai. Uh, not Tibetan, Thai, Theravada Buddhism. And Buddha had a lot of wisdom. He said a lot of very good things. And like I was just telling somebody online, if you can realize that that was written 2,500 years ago, 2,200 years ago, it's a Bronze Age explanation of a lot of things. When Buddhism does get very supernatural at points, and it is based on Hinduism, not Hinduism, Hinduism is the modern version of it, but it's based on the Vedic uh, pantheon. You have to realize that there's a lot of underlying wisdom there, and it doesn't hurt to account for the Bronze Age explanations of things and account for some of the cultural differences. There's... I spend a lot of time studying. I've even spent some time on retreats in temples. Never a silent retreat. I talk too much. I could never do a silent retreat. The monks are amazing people. The, the devotion and wisdom that some of them have are, are, are amazing. And whether you believe them or not, part of you would should accept the wisdom of somebody like that. Even I have a respect for um, Catholic monks and nuns. I may not have a lot of respect for the religion itself, but the individual people, I do. And that is partly because of my grandfather. Um, he used to volunteer at a convent doing work around there. And I spent a, some of my childhood um, hanging around nuns. And it's always led me to have a, a respect for somebody uh, that devoted and studied in a thing. Even if you disagree, a smart person would have a level of respect for somebody like that. And that's where the blend of believer and skeptic comes in. If you were to talk to a Buddhist monk and constantly be skeptical, constantly asking questions, trying to disprove him or prove him, you would miss a lot of the wisdom that you would be able to, to glean from him. And I fall into the skeptic category far too much. It's something I'm really guilty of. And that is part of a swing from being far on the other side. Uh, with my Catholic upbringing, it was pounded into my head that I should believe. Unquestioningly, I should believe. I should be quiet and not ask questions. So after that, I went the complete opposite direction. I'm still guilty of that, and it's hard sometimes. But you learn, you change, you move on.